Hello everyone, welcome to the session of business simulation and risk analytics. In the previous session of this module, we have discussed the basic of Monte Carlo simulation and the importance of business simulation in business forecasting and also couple of illustrative example of Monte Carlo simulation. Today, we will extend that concept to the continuous version of you know, Monte Carlo simulation. That means, in the previous session, we discussed some discrete uh, event simulations or say, you know, like frequency distribution are being captured in a discrete manner and then we have created the histogram and we have developed the simulation scheme, the Monte Carlo simulation scheme and then we have generated random number and we, we got different illustration through the simulation experiment, but that was for discrete uh, data set. Today, we will concentrate on continuous version of examples. So, if you recap that you know basic definitions within a first two, three minutes. So, what we have done is that you know what is business simulation, what simulation helps you in understanding system behavior or the dynamic nature of the problem to get a deep system thinking, complex system thinking of the problem and you get a insight of it and you interpret the, the operational activities or the movement of the problem through different imitating process or you know, repetitive process. So, that that mimicking process are nothing but the simulation same business problem or same behavior you are studying over a period of time or you know over different instances you can say. So, there are different type of simulation process are there and through that you understand the different insights or the business behavior of the system. So, it also helps you not only the study of uh, system behavior, it also helps you the risk modeling part. Today, we will discuss little bit about risk modeling part uh, through Monte Carlo simulation of different business problem. At least you know one or two problem today we will study, then in the next session we will discuss more detail about the software illustration using advanced excel and then how we can make risk modeling using simulation of different business problem. And then you know recall the basic Monte Carlo simulation what we have discussed just previous session. So, it is nothing but generation of different random number through probability distribution of the particular variable. For example, if you have a variable say you know in a system, this is a system say and, and in that case suppose you have a variable say or parameter say which is uncertain or risk and that you are generating and you are getting output of the system for a different input data. That input data you directly do not give to the system, you generate through random sample, random number. This is what the Monte Carlo simulation and that process you repeat again and again and you generate different instances. This is what the Monte Carlo simulation in detail we have discussed and that can be generated through roll the whole process of Monte Carlo simulation or through RAND function, which we have discussed uh, in the previous session. I will show you today also how to generate RAND function in Excel again. These are the steps, remember set the uh, probability distribution of the data of the parameter that you are going to discuss or you are going to give as input of to your simulation model and then construct the cumulative distribution function second step and then generate the random interval for discrete case we have discussed in detail just I am recapping the process and then generate the random number from that particular interval right and conduct the experiment unless you reach your you know threshold level or the stopping criteria and record all the instances and do the statistical inferences or sensitivity analysis to get insights of your problem and the system behavior and you may get many solutions of your problem. So, now let us go to the continuous version of or continuous case of simulation where the input data will not be in a discrete. So, far two, three examples I have given including the previous sessions where all these data sets are considered as a discrete event, right event and the corresponding frequency and the probability and you are generating cumulative and the interval which is very easy to understand and we have illustrated it effectively. But in case inter arrival time of customers in a waiting line say follow exponential distribution and you want to illustrate that through simulations. So, in that case your distribution function should be exponential type this is the distribution function right and then your you know density function will be you know exponential type and then you have to take the cumulative distribution functions you have to take. So, in that case what will happen you have to calculate your capital Fx and then the interval how will calculate the interval here because it is a continuous case right continuous case. And in that case you cannot create your interval because random number interval are not been given here. 
So how to create the scheme for that, that we are going to discuss. This can be applied to exponential, this can be applied to triangular because in practice the parameters value can be defined as uncertain or risk parameter through triangular distribution, normal distribution which is very common in practice, uniform distribution, all these things can be done also. I will show you a couple of applications today. So the parameter or input data sets can be of any type of distribution in case it is continuous and in practice it is more practical, right? So how to illustrate and create the Monte Carlo scheme that we are going to discuss. How to create the Monte Carlo scheme? This we are going to discuss for continuous case now. So let us go to this one x illustration of say exponential distribution. The rest we can understand through Excel. First understand how to create the Monte Carlo scheme. So let me write down the first question now. How to create the Monte Carlo scheme. So that we are going to discuss now. So first step, the distribution function which you have already calculated, you have assumed based on the data, you pattern you in the software, I will show you how to generate or how to assign a distribution function to a data sets or what type of distribution that particular data set follow that also you can generate immediately through the software that risk at risk software. I will show you if not today in the next session. But suppose inter arrival of customers in a waiting line analysis follow exponential distribution. We all know, so we are assuming that say fx which is of exponential type and the function we have assumed like this say, right. And the cumulative will be like that. How come you can get the cumulative? You can calculate the cumulative as the integration is so 0 to x fx dx. We know the range of this fx will be, it is a cumulative value, so it will be say, you know, generally 0 less equals to x less equals to 1 because you know probability cannot be more than 1. So we will define it like this. Say. So we know the range. So if we calculate it, it will be like, you know, 1 minus e to the power of you know, minus lambda x. If you calculate this, you can check at home and you can get to know how to calculate this. So once you will get this fx value, we will enter into the step 3 say. That means the interval. But how will generate the interval because here it is a continuous case. For the sake of illustration, we are assuming it as u say. So in that case, what we are going to do? Let us first, you know, you rearrange the data and we will get the exponential distribution and we will create the Monte Carlo scheme say, random number interval scheme. So in that case, what you will do? I will take say, you know, rearrange say e to the power minus lambda x equals to 1 minus u. I have rearranged it say and then I will take ln of minus lambda x equals to ln of 1 minus u. I can take that both sides I have taken. So it will be minus lambda x equals to ln of 1 minus u, right. Now x equals to minus 1 by lambda ln of 1 minus u. But what is the range of u? Since 0 less than you know, u less than 1 say or you know you can consider 1 of 2. So in that case since the, int, the, the random interval in, in case you consider 0 in that case it will like 0, 0 to 99 so we consider or say 1 to say 90, 100 the way in discrete case I have talked. So you can consider accordingly whether you will consider the initial value or the last value. So accordingly you can put the less than greater than sign suppose because the total 100 number you have to allocate in a bucket say right. So make sure that you should not can count 100 1 you count only 100 number for the sake of two digit. If you go to n digit, three digit, so it will be total 1000 number, right. So this way you can, you know, in that case if you take 0, 0, 0, then it should be 999. So that you can get 1000 th number or 0, 0 to 99. So this way you should get because all number are equally likely and whatever the number you pick from the bucket or random number you generate, they are equally likely and they follow uniform distribution. So any number can come again. So therefore all follow uniform distribution. Therefore you have to consider only this type of interval say. But here you are continuous case now. So this range since u belong to 0 to 1 ln of 1 minus u ln of 1 minus u is nothing but ln of u. So any one you can select, any one you can select between the two because ultimately u belongs to 0 1 so ln of u and ln of 1 minus u remain same. So this is you can write or x equals to minus 1 by lambda ln of u. So look at the two scheme. So let me put, put a color you will get to know, look at the two scheme now. So this is one scheme or any one, any one, both are same now because ln of u and ln of 1 minus u are same because it is the, because u belongs to 0 to 1. So therefore you can consider either of the scheme. So this is what nothing but here you can see x equals to minus 1 by lambda ln of u. So this is the scheme. Now what you do, you generate any number from the bucket, look at here. Now let me keep 
the say you know linkage now suppose whatever you can consider to the bucket now so what do you do or even you can to the to this whatever now what do you do you go to you know your data set now you generate any number say in your interval say let me write you can see here say look at here effectively suppose you know this is your say x and this is your capital f x right range 0 to 1 and suppose you have created your cumulative value suppose whatever you have created your cumulative value like this say say 1 and what happened here initially you are generating random number interval 0 to 1 say you have generated say 0.5 say you have generated 0.5 so the corresponding x will come here corresponding x will go to this u generated here look at here here you have generated u look at here here you have generated u and corresponding x you will get here u you generate here u you generate here in this y axis and you will get corresponding x this x will go to your you know system of simulation whether manufacturing system supply chain whatever you are working or you know demand planning you can put it here this x will go but effectively you are not directly giving x you are giving actually putting the random interval in this inverse scheme and through that you are generating x now suppose next iteration you have generated say 0 0.4 suppose so 0 0.4 here say corresponding x so for corresponding that corresponding x will be here if you generate say 0 0.8 0 0.8 or 0 0.88 whatever depending on the interval of your data in excel you can do it so you are getting x this x so different x you are generating effectively not directly but through the scheme of inverse function and this is what the continuous case of distribution how you can generate you know different random number through the inter inverse scheme and you can get different x and that x is nothing but this in your reverse scheme you have generated and that x in every simulations every iterations of making process you are giving input of x here directly but in an implicit manner how by this inverse function this inverse function can be generated through random interval or random number which is belonging to this capital fx or cumulative distribution graph or you can say the range of 0 to 1 from there you are generating actually right so this is what the continuous version of scheme now if you think that can we discuss that for a normal case also yes so this scheme for exponential case here i have created the scheme or you can see the yellow side calculation here in the right hand side corner so this is what the scheme of inverse function this has been already inbuilt in excel or in python but here if you see so for normal case also in case the data follow normal distribution suppose your x follow normal distribution with mean and sigma say right suppose in that case what will be the scheme similarly you can calculate your fx and then corresponding capital fx after taking integration of fx dx you know and then you can assign u equals to this particular formula whatever you will get and then you can inverse calculation you can scale the inverse inverse calculation and then you know you can get to know your scheme x equals to some formula in terms of u and then you can generate same way you can calculate from your graph and you know and you can generate different u here and between 0 to 1 0 to 1 say and then you can get corresponding x corresponding x here x here right so this is what the scheme inverse scheme but for normal case you know it's very difficult with scheme this density function is very difficult to calculate and the corresponding fx will be more complicated so this illustration are been done in the excel or in python say i'll show you in excel today this function normal normal inverse function you can use with the data and you can generate the simulation input random number and the corresponding x value the x value this may be demand x may be planning whatever you can consider x right now suppose let us consider the data who follow normal distribution with mean 100 and standard deviation say 20 suppose this will illustrate in excel now for normal case suppose we are going to illustrate now which follow the parameter it can be any parameter right it can follow it suppose it is following normal distribution and how to create the inter scheme and generate the number for your in a practical problem let us illustrate that here you can see suppose x is following suppose x is demand say and it is following normal distribution as I talked in the PPT with mean say 100 and standard deviation say 20. Suppose you have the data and from that data you have calculated the mean and standard deviation suppose here. Now we will take that information mean and standard deviation and we will generate the inverse function here and we will calculate say fx say suppose fx. Suppose fx we are calculating here suppose function value. Function could be supply chain it could be say anything. Suppose this function formula are nothing but say suppose I am writing say 2x plus say 
थर्टी से सपोज फॉर द सेक ऑफ इलास्ट्रेशन टू एक्स प्लस थर्टी दिस फंक्शन इज ए सपोज प्रॉफिट फंक्शन और सप्लाई चेन फंक्शन और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कॉस्ट हॉट एवर दैट यू विल हैव टू कैलकुलेट फॉर डिफरेंट डेटा सेट्स ऑफ डिमांड राइट डिफरेंट डेटा सेट्स ऑफ डिमांड एंड डेटा सेट्स आर हेयर बट यू हैव टेकन द मीन हेयर कैलकुलेशन फ्रॉम द डेटा एंड सपोज स्टैंडर्ड डिविजन हेयर बट हाउ जेनरेट डिफरेंट दिस फंक्शन वैल्यू फॉर ए गिविन डिमांड सिंस डिमांड इज अनसर्टन एंड रिस्की पैरामीटर एंड हुई इज फॉलोइंग नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन यू डोंट नो इन ए नेक्स्ट इवेंट व्हाट वुड बी द डिमांड सिंस डिमांड इज अनसर्टन देयर फॉर योर यू नो से सप्लाई चेन कॉस्ट और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कॉस्ट विल आल्सो बी अनसर्टन और प्रॉफिट भी अनसर्टन हेयर सो दिस फंक्शन विल आल्सो बिकम अनसर्टन बट हाउ टू जेनरेट दैट बिकॉज यू कैन नॉट टेक द एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू डज नॉट गिव एक्सेप्ट मीन एंड स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन ऑन एन एवरेज एक्सपेक्टेशन यू कैन कैलकुलेट बट हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू सी द डाइवर्सिफाइड डेटा सेट्स थ्रो डिफरेंट random number generation and we'll see what kind of instances we are getting of demand functions or say you know output objective functions here so let's see how we can create this inverse scheme through monte carlo simulation first step we have created a rand function now let's see how this rand function are been generated and the normal distribution scheme can be executed through this monte carlo simulation scheme so here i'll show you how the rand function are been generated let me delete this first call the rand function here you can see the rand function just select it and drag it say for say 20 sample say so you can see 20 sample of random number we have generated like we have generated in the bucket with the example of simulation scheme same way you can generate here right you can you know reduce the uh, number say up to two digit or say three digit here i have not done that you can do it this range could be 0 to 1 say you know you can mention that 0 less than 1 say so it will lie between 0 to 1 and then you can generate the rand function say rand number here say and then the normal distribution scheme the inverse scheme how to create it the scheme let me write the scheme the scheme you can write like let me delete it also just call the normal inverse look at here normal inverse select the probability that is a rand function here and the mean mean of the data we have consider 100 say put dollar sign so that you can drag it and then select your standard deviation you also fetch this so we have created the normal inverse scheme here for this data set say and we found the 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 value of normal distribution as x as input to your system the output system say suppose you have a data set here say suppose you have a data set here so this data set say you are actually calling here through this distribution scheme normal distribution scheme and this mean is nothing but the average of this data average of this data is nothing but your mean and standard deviation you have calculated here suppose and then the scheme you are generating here chini through inverse function look at normal inverse function through this rand function so rather than taking average you are generating through the scheme normal distribution scheme you are through through, through inverse function you are generating it and here you can see so function output say as i mentioned suppose you know you have a system say say system and say let me write down here it is as a system say rather than function i can write system output say right system output so say suppose 2x plus 30 so what is that here actually this is your system output say system and the output will be here and you are giving input this input will come through inverse scheme so first you are generating rand function your data sets are here your data sets are here data sets are that data sets you have taken the mean and standard deviation you have calculated and through rand function you are generating that data set through here like the way i have told you suppose you know your distribution is like this but you have created your like you know cumulative inverse function right suppose so 0 to 1 so here this is called rand function you are generating rand function here between 0 to 1 and then through inverse function you are generating x this is called your x or input this input this is your input and you are getting output of this system say this we are going to show you say suppose now so here output will be say 
into x, what is the x? This this value, this x axis, say, this normal inverse input data that means say your say demand, sales, whatever, and then plus 30. System output is it's a say objective function, it could be say you know profit, supply chain cost, you know, manufacturing process, productivity, or you know, financial statement, whatever. You calculate it. If you drag it for 20 samples, say you got the system output. So, this is what the inverse function scheme that means or enter Monte Carlo simulation scheme. So, first from the data sets you get your mean standard deviation and the pattern of the data. Through the software I will show you how to create this you know data pattern, how to generate the data pattern also what type of distribution it is following. We are assuming it suppose it is following normal distribution. Then through rand function you generate your rand function I mean random number sample between 0 to 1 and then through this inverse function scheme you get your x input or say the parameter the demand sales that input through this you know say, say column number h and that will go as input to your system system input and then you are getting system output through different simulation through sim different iterations here i have shown you 20 samples if you have a thousands of sample generation and then you can take the mean of the data system output the confidence interval and the standard deviation, the skewness, kurtosis, lower bound, upper bound, all these analysis, statistical inferences you can draw and you can get in insights of it. So, this is what the basic scheme Monte Carlo for normal distribution. Now, what we will do? We will go for different application through the software version. Now, let us see one application with some real life problem where we will use the continuous case of simulation. So, just read this particular example here. Here we have considered a large catalog merchandiser is planning to have a special furniture promotion for the year. And now the company has given a order, they have placed a order and initially based on the previous assumption or previous information or the data, they have given a order to the manufacturer for 3000 chairs. So, this is the initial order they have given with a price of 175 rupees say per unit and company is planning to all are like you know initial assumption initial plan they are thinking all are in expectation mode what will happen in future though do not know but before the business starts say maybe the winter season many people starts with woolen material selling right they procure from the manufacturer and they, they, they sell for that particular time period say two months three months the one once the winter over that product will be sold out with some discount price. But during this 2-3 months, there will be a peak period of sale. So, this type of problem you can assume it. Even summer also it can be considered as a similar problem say. Suppose, so therefore, they are planning that the on an average per product selling price, they will set as 250 rupees per unit. So, that means they will be having around you know 250 minus 170 or almost 75 rupees profit per chair say. You can consider the woolen materials or anything whatever you think. The promotion will last for 8 weeks say 2 months say and then after that the remaining if there is a remaining inventory say they will remaining inventory or the excess inventory will be sold out with a discount price of 125 from the current like you know selling price. So, it will be almost 50 percent discount say. Now, the company believe that on an average 2000 units will be sold out during the first 8 weeks. There might be more than that but initially they are assuming that that minimum 2000 units of you know inventory or demand will be there, sales will be there during the peak period say 8 weeks or say 2 months say tentatively. And if there is a excess inventory, that excess inventory will be sold out with a discount price of 125. What would be the profit for the retailer? So, let us see how we can calculate it. The basic problem we have not in incorporated the simulation, Monte Carlo simulation here and the risk analytics and the future forecast. Now, let us see the simple calculations. Suppose P is the profit, we have noted it as a profit and you know look at the notation C is the you know initial purchase price, R is the you know selling price, this is the total inventory order and B is the say total demand for that particular period. And if you take this calculation, here is the total profit nothing but the you know the revenue minus cost, the profit R minus C you can see into your demand, this demand and then the remaining inventory, if there is a remaining inventory, what is remaining inventory? S minus B, S minus B is the remaining inventory, you can see this too, S minus B is the remaining inventory. Multiplied, if there is excess inventory, multiplied by the discount price. So, you know, what is that? R by 2, like you know, 250 by 2 minus 
C. C is nothing but your 175. So, this is your total basic problem. But we will understand how Monte Carlo simulation can help you in taking a decision in practical dynamic situation. And if you calculate all this with this data, you will get your profit is exactly 1 lakh. Right. Simple calculations I will show you in Excel also. Now, in case if you think that, look at the problem statement and come back to the overall information that they are assuming that they have given order of 3000, fine, but they are assuming that on an average, let me open a highlight point, you will get to know, on an average they are assuming that, you know, 2000 will be the demand, right, during the peak period, during the peak period of the season, 2000 will be the demand and also they are assuming that the selling price, suppose look at the practical dynamic situation, what happens in practice outskirt of your city or the town you, you may see that during winter season many people come and they set up their store shop and then they sell the woolen product say you know for say two months three months so think that type of problem suppose for the sake of you know it's a news vendor problem we call it but just think about the sales promotion problem now they have set a selling price of 250 on an average but you know they can bargain with the customer say so so that you know this could have a flexibility so, if the some customers are very keen to buy the product or they like the product, they can sell it by 300 rupees also. They can increase the selling price. And if somebody is bargaining and there are you no know, customer on a particular day, suppose they can reduce the price with say 200 rupees. So, so, the selling price can also have a flexibility in practice. And also demand based on the past data, you have calculated the tentative demand rate on an average. But in practice, you don't know demand could be anything. It can follow normal distribution. It can follow triangular distribution. What kind of frequency you don't know, right? On future actual, what will be the demand you know? So suppose demand is also uncertain. In that case, what would be your expected profit? In that case, your profit will not be the fixed one lakh. It will be expected profit. So what would be the expected profit? That we are going to discuss now. So look at this is the general case, complete deterministic situation now. Now we are going to incorporate the uncertainty or the risk parameter into the problem now. Now we are considering the demand, demand follow triangular distribution, right? Demand follow triangular distribution. So this is first assumption we are considering. And then we are assuming that the sales price, that the sales price that we have captured, sales price follow uniform distribution, right? So with a minimal point say 250 and demand also 2000, okay? So this is what the information say 2000 as the middle point of triangular distribution of demand we are considering and selling price also we are now considering as a uniform distribution with a variation of say you know say 200 to say 300 say it can have a variation suppose the retailer can play with the customer say dynamic situation the practical situation we are trying to capture in that case how we can do this using simulations or how the Monte Carlo simulation can be incorporated and you can get the expected profit of your problem. This profit will be expected now, expected profit now because it cannot be fixed now because demand and selling price are changing in practical cases. So your profit will be all you know, expected more with standard deviation and confidence interval. We will calculate the confidence interval also of the data. So demand is following triangular distribution with a range of like this and that and also say you know and selling price is also following a uniform distribution. So in that case, what would be your overall analysis through, through simulation? Let us see, we will discuss that using Excel. So here we have the basic data sets. Look at the same what I have shown you in PPT, here in Excel also same calculation. You can see the calculation as it is, right, 1000. Now we are putting this distribution to distribution into the data, we are incorporating. So demand is following say triangular distribution, for the sake of illustration, you can change the distribution based on the previous data pattern say, right, based on the historical data. And accordingly, you can fit the distribution. I will show you that also through the software later stage. So now, these two distribution we are considering for the sake of illustration of the model. Now, let us come to the simulation model. So here, if you see, manually I have done, then I will go to the software and show you the how simulation can be done immediately and thousands of instances you can generate and you can take inferences through the data and make a better decision making for the particular example or in real life situations. So let us see here. So here, we have considered demand is following triangular distribution. Here, we have using RAND function look at the function here, we have followed the formula of triangular distribution. Then we have considered the selling price is also following some you know, uniform distribution. We can see the formula of lower bound plus the gap into the RAND function. So you, you can generate different type of initial price starting from 200 to up to 300, right. 
because the rand function is lying between 0 to 1. So, accordingly your the interval value can go up to highest and to the lowest. If it is 0, then it will be come out with the lower point. If it is highest, it will go to the upper point. So, in between if you generate random number, you will get different initial price, right. So, this is what, uh, what is our data and this is our profit now. Look at the for this particular, we have through random number, we are generating demand and initial selling price. Now, demand is not more, no more to 2000. Now, it is 2461. And selling price is 251. Now, your profit is 1 lakh. From 1 lakh, it has gone to 162. But for one instance, one simulation. Now, if you generate again, suppose another demand. Look at and say another selling price. By generating different simulation or you know different input data for a demand and selling initial price, you will be able to get different profit. Here, for the sake of illustration, I have generated 20 such sample by repeating the process of simulation. So, here I have generated say 20 replications I have done, you can see here. So, one simulations I have got another simulations. If you change the selling price or initial value, you may get another, you know, say here you will get another value say now, look at here, it is changing now. So, this way you may get different output. So, here I have replicated the 20 instances, the simulation process and the corresponding profit price, everything I have calculated here. Look at profit can be negative also in terms of scale value I have kept here, not the actual value there. Here I have, though I have put the data direct value, but here I have taken the three digit values here. And then if you can take copy this value here, because simulations will generate different data set. Suppose I have copied and pasted here as a value. And if you take your total observation, sample mean of the data, look at sample mean of the profit and the demand, whatever. Suppose profit we are counting and then stamp sample standard deviation and then you know the with the error, the standard error. Look at the standard error I have calculated here and then you know that with the range of say 90 percent confidence interval and if you take the lower bound or upper bound using the formula you get look at 90 percent confidence interval you found the lower bound of profit will be 71,000 and upper bound could be 90 percent confidence 1,68,000. So, from 1 lakh it is going to 1,68,000. 90% confidence. If you change the confidence level, you will get another interval also. So, you are getting mean value also of your data. Look at mean value of your data based on this 20 sample. If you increase the sample size, it will change because you, are, you have a new demand and new selling price. You are changing that and you are taking different combinations. And you can find, you know, based on this 20 sample, you may get 1,20,000 as the profit, expected profit, mean value, expected profit with standard deviation and the confidence interval. But if you increase the sample size, you might get your on and average the mean value could be 1 lakh. But variation will be there and the confidence interval will be, you will be able to calculate. This will give you much more flexibility in, in understanding the practical situations. What could happen in future and how can you take a recourse action, that analysis you can do also. This is a manual calculation through Excel of simulations. Now, let us see the same problem using the Adrix software. More detail of this software I will discuss in the next session, detail with couple of case illustration also. But let us understand how this simulations are being incorporated in Excel and how this particular problem can be addressed. So, I have already installed the Adrix software here. So, you can also install it, 14 days trial version are available through you know Palisade or Lumivero website. So, from there you can install this 14 days trial version of software and you can practice. But if you want to buy this particular software, you have to you know procure through your institutes and through license versions, which is very costly, but you can try buying in case you like this software. But anyway, let us focus here. So, suppose I have installed this software for 14 days trial version say and, and then we will run this particular model using simulation now. Let us see what could be the output. But here you can just, just come back here the analysis that we have done based on this input data of demand and stochastic parameter of demand and say you know initial price which are random in nature. And therefore, we have generated the simulations and 20 replication we have done it here manually. But here we will do through the software. We will not generate 20 sample, we might generate 2000 samples of simulation. Mimicking process that in the last class I have discussed detail about the basic simulations. That part we are going to do it here now. So, the software is here now, but how to incorporate this demand as a here you can see the new new formula risk triangle. How we can define it? Let me show you here. Suppose here what do you do? Let me delete it first. Look at no sale is there, now it was 2000, right? 2000, say. So, I will incorporate and it was a 250, say, right? So, let me delete it and I will start from the scratch. 
right. So, select it and go to the software define distribution look at. So, we consider it as a triangular distribution right. So, define distribution and suppose this is the range and what was the range we have assumed you can come here. Let me check again the range I think it was 500 least case and it was I think 3000 I will check and come back again I think 3200 something suppose I will modify it suppose this data were given say. So, let me see here I can show you then so around 5000 and and here it is almost say you know almost 3500 sorry 500 to 3500 so 3500 okay so you have set it now you can check again the the distribution function look at 500 you have the flexibility to change the data here also and 500 to 3500 with the middle value most likely value like triangular distribution we are considering is a triangular distribution based on the previous data. If you have a sample data and you do not know which distribution it is following through the software you can you know set the distribution also based on the recommendation of that software I will show you in next class in detail of it. Now we are assuming it as a triangular distribution and now initial price I have reset now now I will consider it as a uh, say uniform distribution right that is what we have assumed here. So, what I will do? I will go to define distribution again and then, then we will consider it as a uniform distribution. This is only for illustration only, right? And the, in the lower bound we are setting it as a 200, the bargaining price with the customer, and it can go up to say 300, right? This is what we have assumed the range of the data, or the selling price earlier it was 250 fixed. Now you are making a flexibility that you do not know you will be able to convince the customer about your product and you can sell it, right? So, now both the data are random now. So, we have considered them as a risk parameter right and any every simulations one input of demand will be generated one input of demand will be generated here sorry one input of demand will be generated here and one input of selling price will be generated and if you consider them and if you recalculate your profit you will get new profit say now. Now, look at the output cell here you can see the risk output that you have to do but let me do it again so that you should understand how to do it just click it put a backspace this is a simple calculation right it was there here also you can see the original model you can see simple calculation look at here same calculation come back to the risk model and then the output cell for the software you have to click you have to mention that it is output cell just click that cell and just put output option that is it done. So, now suppose this is your profit right you can put your profit your company profit whatever you want you can put in this bracket the output cell name right or you can put the date also whatever anyway. So, this is our profit now it is a simulation is set now. Now, let us go to add risk and I told you the in the excel manually we have run say 20 samples say. Now, you can run 2000 sample also here look at if you want you can change the sample size. How many simulations you want to generate or instances you want to generate from your this particular problem of profit calculation through this retailer example right. Suppose you want to generate 2000 samples say 2000 sample you want to generate profit for different combination of demand and initial and selling price. Remember this is what the simulation Monte Carlo simulation you are doing. In every iteration you are generating look at in the previous class I have discussed detail of it. In every iteration you will be generating one demand through your AND function and the inverse cumulative distribution remember it it is a following triangular distribution. And then just now I have talked about exponential and normal same logic here I have assumed triangle and triangular distribution and uniform distribution. Similarly, you can take the inverse value and the corresponding through excel or the you do not have to do because it is the inbuilt formula has been built by this been set by this particular software right. And then you get one output of you know demand and selling price and if you put it here you will get some profit. Again you change your demand and selling price and another simulations you will get another profit. This way suppose you will be generating through Monte Carlo simulation process the scheme that I have talked about the 4 5 steps that is been will be repeated here again. Now, just put it say 2000 simulations you want to do 
Now just run the simulation. Let's see what happens. So look at so it. Since it's a trial version, for your information, I am sharing here academic use only. You can see the output now. So we are generating 2,000 sample now. So 2,000 sample has been generated here. Remember, if it is a full access version, so you know then this particular you know water color will not be there. But when you download it for 14 days trial versions, you will also see the similar water color of option. That is a trial version for academic use only. But you can test this particular software for 14 days and you can get to know insight of it. I'll discuss more detail about this particular software and with case applications with the actual version of the software with couple of case illustration. Now let us focus about this outcomes. So what, what we have found here? Remember here the output data set here. Look at the mean almost 99,551 because this is what we have considered the general on and average expected profit. So mean is almost same but in earlier case it was only one instance you have generated but now you have considered demand and selling price as a random parameter right and because of that because uncertainty is involved over there your profit will also follow some you know uncertainty and here you have generated 2000 sample of your profit look at here 2000 sample of your profit you have generated here and through that what you have found you found the mean of your expected profit and also your standard deviation look at the standard deviation here look at standard deviation is how much 1 lakh 1 lakh is the variation for this data See, in some simulation you may get a high demand and the high selling price also in that case it can generate through the machine through simulation process and then in that case your profit will be too good too high but there might be a case where you have a very less demand and less selling price you are selling also with the less amount say 200 rupees and you are also getting very say 500 demands so in that case your profit will be very less look at the downside case here so what does it mean it means that your profit has a high variation because of simulation because of simulation you are getting different type of you know instances of your profit and you have captured all the 2000 samples here and you have calculated mean don't be afraid about your too much of variation you can come up with your confidence interval right look at the confidence interval mean median standard deviation skewness casual kurtosis everything you found here so here you can see suppose this data you can copy and you can you know you can go and you can you know import this data and and you can write in your Excel or you know PPT or you know you know word file and you can go for a presentation also in your project report also wherever you want you can use use it right for your project purpose and now look at the particular analysis here suppose here I have mentioned that in the in the manually I have shown you 90 percent confidence interval now suppose here you can see also 90 percent confidence interval the data range etc for this particular data sample now if you want to change that what would be the chance that you know my profit will be say minimum 2 lakh suppose look at what is the chance that my profit will be minimum 2 lakh look at there is a 17 percent chance 17.6 percent chance that your profit will be above 2 lakh only 17 percent chance and also what is the chance that my profit will not be go below zero there is a 19 percent chance that for this variation in demand and selling price that your profit may go below zero profit may be negative also so make sure of that so you have a confidence interval you can play with that also suppose you know if you want to put say another confidence interval say, say five percent in the upper side and five percent in the down uh, lower side you can put that also and you can see what would be your changes in the profit etc so all flexibility are there in your hand and you can make the policy and you can make it strategical decision making also here now you see this profit is being explained by demand and say selling price right but who is making maximum variation in your profit you can see the tornado graph here look at the tornado graph here you can see if you keep initial price as a selling price here initial price means selling price right if you keep your selling price as static and in that case if you think the demand is uncertain only and in that case what will happen demand is making maximum variation to your profit we call it a tornado graph but if you keep demand fixed and if you make the variation in initial price or selling price only then in that case it is also making variation of your profit but it has a less variation uh, impact in your profit than demand so demand is making maximum variation in your profit so you can trigger demand and if you can calculate a better demand for the next year and you can plan with the more you know data collections with the experts opinion of the field and then you can if you can calculate or make a better forecast of your demand probably variation of your profit will reduce here so these are the many other analysis also you may able to get from this particular software 
I'll detail discuss detail about it. You can see the spider graph, which is making most maximum variation in that in terms of data. So both are making variation, but demand is making more variation. Look at the red color line than your selling price. So this kind of analysis you can get to know from the data, and you may get a better insights of this simulation modeling through the software of any practical problem. This is today we have started with the basic problem of simulation with a software called Adrift software. More detail about this software. We'll discuss in the next session and also the features of the software and how to utilize the software for different, you know, forecasting model. We get the time series model. We have studied this through Arima model also. We'll utilize this for this particular software for different other model too. So we'll see in the next session details of this software how to utilize it. But for this particular problem, we have solved. the monte carlo simulation of continuous version manually as well as through the software advanced excel software in the next class we will extend this concept of monte carlo simulation through the software called adrisk and different type of prediction model or predictive modeling will be analyzed as well as the case applications will be analyzed through this software so with that let us conclude today's session of continuous version of simulation as well as the if you consider the previous session club together the entire concept of monte carlo simulation and its application in different practical problem we'll study detail about it through this software in the next session thank you